This is a supermoto, but what components actually form such a bike? Short answer is easy. Take a dirt bike, put it on street wheels, and voila, you have a supermoto. Okay, maybe there's a little more to it. If that was just it, this video would be utterly pointless. These bikes usually don't come like this from the factory, but more often than not are enduro or motocross bikes that are converted for street use. It might seem a little odd that something that was made to be deliberately bad on the road can be turned into something so magnificent on the pavement, but even big manufacturers do it. For example, Husqvarna, KTM and Suzuki have long been offering already converted dirt bikes. As a little disclaimer, in this video I'm talking more about the hardcore purpose-built sumos and not about the 600cc and up bikes that some manufacturers do. Those bikes are also brilliant, like the Husqvarna 701 or the KTM 690 SMCR, but those are not really the point of this video. Some of the characteristics they do share, but some not. Case in point, engine size. The most popular displacement is going to be 450cc, but 250s are also a decent part of the market. The reason is simple, these bikes are powerful enough to allow for proper street riding. Starting from around 50 horsepower, these 4-stroke thumpers use the light weight of the bike to their advantage to deliver some proper good acceleration up to about 100 km per hour. While there are some madmen out there that convert 2 strokes, I applaud them, but they are definitely not the majority here. Arguably the most important aspect is wheels. Dirt bike wheels are big. And just like a sumo athlete, while being extremely resistant, they are kinda hard to handle. Big means a lot of mass that needs to be leaned into corners, and that's no bueno. The answer to this problem is simple. Just put regular street wheels on. Usually this will consist of a 17-inch pair of rims, but sometimes for racing, some people do opt for a smaller 16.5-inch front wheel, like in the case with my steed. Another thing to note, these wheels are usually tubeless, so no need to keep around your rusty tubes. Up to here is the bare minimum that a bike needs to have in order to be considered a supermoto. But I would argue that's not quite enough. Yes, you can ride this on the street, but this is not the proper sumo experience everyone is raving about. For that, you're gonna have to dive in a bit deeper. And deeper in this case means stepping into the braking system. While the regular brakes are fine for off-road use, they are not designed for repeated stops at high speeds. In order to mitigate this, the bigger front discs are a necessity. And also, if you really want to do it properly, changing the caliper and the master cylinder to a beefier aftermarket version is recommended. Now, rear brake upgrades are a thing, but I believe that a well-maintained factory system can be enough. The front brake takes most of the punishment on the bike, and I would say that as long as you're able to easily lock the rear with the stock braking system, you probably don't need to do an upgrade there. Another core component of a supermoto is suspension. The issue with stock is that more often than not, the stock forks and shocks are going to be way too plush. That is great for taking every little bump on a single track, but on the road or racetrack you want something a little stiffer. There are multiple options for this, you can change a lot of parts, but basically an internal component change can be enough. But also note that there are aftermarket options out there, like this Olin's shock I have in the back. These street upgrades will greatly improve the stability that your bike has, and with it, your track times if you decide to endeavor into that realm. Further on, all these differences will be pretty minor. For example, protection. Well, just like real life, it's really important to use. On the street, you don't really need beefy handguards or bash plates, and this will also help with keeping the bike's weight down, which is good. Next up is actually gearing. On the road, you'll want to achieve higher speeds and you don't really need your crawler gears. What this means is that bikes will usually have a bigger front sprocket or a smaller rear sprocket, or maybe even a combination of two in some cases. You'll still have plenty of torque, don't worry, but this assures that trucks won't pass you on the highway, for example. Not that I recommend ever taking a supermoto on a highway, but if you have to. Plastics can be slightly different. 
Basically, you don't need such a big front mudguard that would just catch the wind at every opportunity. So a lot of people take a saw to it and make it shorter. American men especially should be accustomed to this procedure from birth. Finally, your bike is done, you're ready to hit the streets. Just that Uncle Sam might want to have a talk beforehand. I bet most of you will want to take these bikes on the street and not just keep them as track weapons. So depending on where you live, you'll need some ugly blink. Blink like a headlight, taillight, blinkers, mirrors, horn, or whatever else you need to get away with. This is it. Now, a lot of people don't realize the sum of components that goes into such a bike, but I hope this video helped clear some things up. And for more supermodel content and bike-related content in general, make sure to follow this channel, give it a subscribe, and also click the bell icon. Also, like it and leave a comment if you think I left something out. I'm really curious to see your opinions on it. That being said, we also released a new episode of Crankcast, which is going to be our weekly Crank It podcast. We're going to talk about news and about different story times from the Marvel motorcycling world. If you're into bikes, I'm sure you'll love it. Until next time though, see you soon.